China's economy is collapsing as we speak. You might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with me? Why should I care? Stay tuned and listen to this video because I'm going to tell you. Zero COVID policy. The Chinese Communist Party has instituted a policy called Zero COVID, with China having a population of about 1.4 billion people. This is obviously not attainable. The totalitarian regime forced harsh lockdowns that brought the busiest cities in the world's second largest economy to a standstill, leading to major problems. It has damaged businesses and industrial supply chains that affect not just China, but the entire world, thanks to our globalized, interconnected, modern society. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, this has caused China's economic growth to fall short of expectations in the second quarter of 2022. It is the lowest growth rate since China's economy shrank by 6.8% in the first quarter of 2020, thanks to the coronavirus, which was unleashed on the world from Wuhan. Under its zero COVID policy, which came under severe criticism, not just at China, but everywhere else worldwide, the Chinese government has shut down Shanghai, China's biggest business and industrial hub with over 25 million people for over two months to bring down the spread of the so-called Omicron variant. The city is yet to achieve complete normality. Likewise, Beijing and several other cities also clamped prolonged restrictions on travel and business operations, prompting analysts to scale down expectations of quick economic recovery for China as the government continues to persist with a strict zero COVID policy to deal with periodic outbreaks of the virus. In totalitarian China, citizens are required to have a negative COVID test within the past 72 hours to do anything, like riding a train, going shopping, or going out to eat. Obviously, this means you have millions of people having to get tested frequently, and the tests are not easy to get. So testing lines are packed. And because of this absurd policy, people cannot go shopping, they cannot visit family and friends, and some cannot even work. In Shanghai, the entire city was forced into a 70-day lockdown after an alleged COVID outbreak. In Shenzhen, large parts of the city were forced to undergo mandatory testing after just one single case of COVID. Then there is the Evergrande mortgage exposure and boycott issue. The once booming economy was also hit hard by a deep slump in the property market and weighed down by the weakening outlook for the global economy. The property market was severely impacted by investor sentiment after China's biggest real estate developer Evergrande Group sparked off a major crisis last year by defaulting payment of installments of its WAP $309 billion debt. That is in US dollars. China is in a massive property bubble with impossible levels of debt. This is a big deal. It affects the entire world. Evergrande is China's Lehman Brothers. And it's not just Evergrande. The Chinese property market is the largest asset class in the world, sitting at around 62 trillion US dollars. But this entire thing is built on a house of cards. China's property bond crash continues to spread as home buyers are refusing to pay mortgages for unfinished construction projects. Chinese citizens in 86 cities are now boycotting as Chinese censors attempt to erase information about this. The dollar bond sell-off that began with Evergrande and decimated nearly all weaker developers is now threatening investment-grade giants like Vanky that until this week seemed insulated. That's not to mention China's problem of ghost cities. Then you have bank runs. All four of China's banks are seeing bank runs due to problems with liquidity. 
Depositors found they could not withdraw money on their bank cards, sparking a run on banks. These bank runs are happening all over China. The Chinese banking system represents 350% of Chinese GDP, unlike the U.S. system, which is only 100%. One of the largest lending categories is, of course, real estate. And as we just discussed, there are major problems there. Chinese property developers are filing bankruptcies at record levels. Moody's has downgraded 91 Chinese property developers just this year alone. Previously, Moody's had only downgraded 54 over the past decade. That indicates China's banks are insolvent. The CCP has begun to brutally repress the bank runs. This isn't just happening at small banks. One of the biggest runs was at the Bank of China, one of the largest SOE banks. Bank stocks are tumbling on escalating risks. Non-performing loans triggered by refusals to pay mortgages could reach 83 billion. Chinese authorities have even held emergency meetings with the banks. The collapse of China will take the chattering class by surprise, even as it is happening in broad daylight, right in front of everyone's eyes. You have a confluence of events, a perfect storm, and China's GDP is the lowest in three decades. That's not to mention its ecological collapse. This is what happens when corrupt leadership fabricates data mismanages a country's finances and fails its citizens. China went from being a manufacturing powerhouse to a country with the highest unemployment rate. We are witnessing not just the potential collapse of China, but the beginning of a global financial crisis that will spread and change the entire world.